Good evening. Give yourselves a hand for another sellout. I mean, we managed. <laughs> I love it. Thank you for choosing jazz. My minister always says, thank you for choosing church. <laughs> but this is, this is the church of music. Absolutely. Um, Ameri this is America's music, and this is the only place that you can hear it in the valley on a, consistently. And played by a German, no less. Two Germans, no less. International. Yeah. Oh, we are. We've been international yeah, for a while. So, yeah. Um, uh, I know that there are a couple of students here tonight. And so, but there's nobody writing papers, just players. People are already kind of playing. So um, I always like to say, especially to the youngest of them, if you have any questions about the form of the music, please feel free to talk to the musicians on the break and have them explain to you because it's, is, it, people say, yeah, keep saying that, but it's true. It's very similar to classical music in that you have variations on a theme. The difference is the theme, it gets, the variations get kind of crazy and out there <laughs> and you have to really listen to know where you are, but you'll get a payoff and you'll recognize it when they come back to the main theme. So that is essentially what the guys are doing, and they're having a conversation with one another, and someone will play something, and somebody will be inspired, and they'll play something similar or different, and you can hear the back and forth. So that's what makes it fun. But you do have to lean in. It's not a passive exercise. So uh, that's why I say thank you for choosing jazz. So um, if you have not been here before, this series is a listening space. Jazz at the Mark is a listening space. So if you have a telephone, now's the time to turn it off or put it on, um, what is it? Airplane mode? Yeah, especially the musicians. <laughs> I know, I've done, man. Vibrator mode. Oh, it's not that kind of party. <laughs> He's so bad. Oh, man. Um, so, uh, yeah, so turn your phone off. Uh, no flashes if you're going to take photographs. And um, preferably you've asked the musicians first if it's okay. And they are actually recording, which I wasn't, I forgot to, uh, that you were gonna do that. So be very careful around the cameras. And uh, having said that, the bar is out to the right. The women's room is next, uh, the men's room, sorry, uh, next to the right. Women's room is at the end of that uh, building on the right. And uh, just be respectful to the musicians. You have to leave, try and wait till between songs. We only seat people between songs. So that's why we go a little bit late so we can make sure everybody gets in. And this is a special evening for me because I have worked with all of these people numerous times. I love them all. They are all virtuosos at their, at their instruments and some at other instruments as well. They've all been recognized all over the world. Um, and they are just out, what's the expression? Out, out, in, her field, out in your field? And the lady in the field, standing there in the field of flowers. But anyway, they're all really, really outstanding in their field. So uh, you hear them tonight. They are um, my friends. I often have toured with them. Tonight, I'm just going to get a chance to listen to them play. This is the North Atlantic Jazz Alliance. Did I get that right? Yes, you I did. I always say that right. Thank you. North Atlantic Jazz Alliance. Yeah, thank you so much for the, uh, thanks very much, sir, for the warm welcome. For the ones that are new to the band, um, we were founded in 2006 as a collaboration of the German diplomatic service and uh, the American embassies in, in Germany. And we were initially three Germans, three Americans, but uh, our vocalist in the meantime lives in Shanghai and that uh, kind of gives us sometimes a logistic nightmare. So tonight you hear the band without the German uh, vocalist. Anyhow, and we've been traveling over the past 16 years primarily um, on, um, in, on the East Coast, on the West Coast, and we just returned from our third Alaskan tour. We were just now um, three days um, on the Kenai Peninsula and played at a festival called Halibut uh, Cove Live, and then we were at Cordova, the Performing Arts Center, and it was uh, wonderful, and as you can see, uh, successful. There is Marshall's fish box right behind me. Yeah. <laughs> so still with frozen fish, we got in at three o'clock yesterday night. We had a uh, wonderful week, uh, week, and you'll get to hear some of the uh, newly 
uh, written songs. And a lot of them actually have been written in uh, Alaska. So uh, we finally, by the way, I have to show you this, have the first album back that Naja recorded in 2007. And we finally also brought the Alaska sessions with us. It was also um, unavailable for the last two, uh, two, three years because we were in Alaska in 2019 and sold them all out. And uh, we'll play you now and that is very interesting, a song that we dedicated to Marshall Hawkins' 70th birthday, which is always in the middle of July, the birthday in general, not his 70th birthday every year. Uh, however, while we were in Alaska, um, the people in Cordova and in Soldatna threw Marshall Hawkins a birthday party to his 83rd birthday. However, we haven't had a chance to write a tune for his 83rd birthday, so you will hear the song for his 70th birthday, and it is entitled Marshall's Plus. So you're very special. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you very much. I was uh, Marshall Spruce. Let me introduce the band to you from beautiful Mar Vista and uh, former sidekick of Ray Charles, Mr. Paul Krivik. From um, hot Claremont, California, the former lead trumpet player of Frank Sinatra, Mr. Jim Lenahan. One of uh, Europe's most uh, recorded alto saxophonists, played with all the great bands that come over from here to go uh, to Europe, Mr. Jan von Kluwitz <laughs> on alto saxophone. Paul actually decided today we should call him Mr. Jan von Gliewicz. <laughs> yeah. From the lovely town of Idlewild and um, Marshall Hawkins played not just with Miles, but with a lot of great people from the jazz history and not an unknown person here, Mr. Marshall Hawkins. <laughs> and in case you haven't noticed, Marshall just uh, became, um, was awarded a doctoral degree at Cal Baptist in Riverside, so now it's Dr. Marshall Hawkins. And my name is Marcus Berger. I play the piano, and I'm the roadie, the fish organizer, the joke teller, the joke teller you know, whatever there is, the fish filleter. And, uh, and by the way, now Marshall and Paul became uh, halibut slayers this year, so that was a very good thing. Uh, 
a lot of the songs that I contribute to the band all have to deal uh, with fishing. So uh, one of my earlier songs written while fly fishing in a river in Poland is called River Child.
Thank you very much. That was uh, River Child from the actual first album, the North Atlantic Jazz Alliance. We'll come now to a song written by our drummer, Paul Kreibig. Uh, everybody in the band actually is a composer as well. Uh, drummers don't write too often unless they're Phil Collins and Paul Kreibig. Um, he, he doesn't give us the pleasure of him uh, hearing him sing, but um, you will hear his thought prints now, and that's the title of this song.
That was uh, Marshall Hawkins on bass. Jan von Klivitz on alto saxophone and the wonderful Jim Lennon on trumpet. We come now to a, a Jazz at the Merck premiere, a new song, a new hit written by Paul Kreibig. Um, he, some of you know he teaches at Cal State Fullerton and to impress his younger students, you know, he's a, an expert in urban music. Um, he has not conquered the rap lyrics yet. I, I think, you know, for lack of a better explanation, there was not enough cop killing in his lyrics, you know, in, in his rap lyrics. So he decided to leave this song instrumental and it's called Expo Train.
Thank you very much. That was the Expo Train and Marshall Hawkins on bass. So we play you um, one more song before a break that you can utilize to uh, refreshen your drink, let the air out of, out of these empty glasses by filling uh, uh, mood-enhancing liquids in them. And uh, obviously, you can also utilize this uh, to get some of our cities. They're all $15. That's your direct way to make us, uh, I wouldn't say wealthy, but livable. And you don't give that money to the Schweinhund that runs Spotify. <laughs> so um, this, is a, this is indeed a, a, a world premiere. Um, we were now at a festival called Halibut Cove Live. You wouldn't believe it, it's, it's really a cove or like a mini fjord. And the tidal difference is about 36 feet. And they have a floating stage that looks like a mini version of the Hollywood Bowl. So, and we had to basically bring everything on that floating thing. So in the morning, that stage was about, whatever, 200 yards away from the audience, but in the evening at high tide, it was right next to their noses. So it was fa fabulous. And uh, the people that ran this lodge were absolute sweethearts, and so I decided to uh, write a song, and it's called Halibut Cove. And Paul Kreibig, by the way, did start uh, um, writing lyrics, uh, lyrics for it, and he's, uh, he, you know, he said, don't touch the stove in Halibut Cove. <laughs>
Thank you so much, Caliber Cove, the North Atlantic Jazz Alliance, Paul Krybik, Jan von Klimitz, Marshall Hawkins, Jim Lennon, Marcus Berger. We see you in a few.